Red Dead Redemption 2 story is one of the best stories in gaming history. Rockstar Games created a cast of lovable characters in an amazingly animated game environment that every person who has ever played the game adores. But one thing that Rockstar is not given enough credit for is the silent storytelling within the game. But what is silent storytelling? Well, it's defined as a way to communicate a story without words. So in this video, we're going to be analyzing how Red Dead Redemption 2 uses silent storytelling to enhance their narrative. I guess uh, I'm afraid. There is nothing to be afraid of, Mr. Morgan. Take a gamble that love exists and do a loving act. In a game like Red Dead Redemption 2, every aspect of the game world is designed to tell a story. From the way the characters move and interact with each other, to the smallest details in the environment, by paying attention to these subtle cues, players can glean a deeper understanding of the game's world and characters, and that's what makes silent storytelling so compelling. This isn't just seen within cutscenes, this is seen within the environment we explore. The game's vast open world is full of subtle hints and clues that reveal the story of the American West. From abandoned settlements to weathered wanted posters, every element is designed to paint a picture of a world in decline. By exploring the environment, players can uncover a rich narrative that's often more engaging than any cutscene or dialogue. I think a great example of this is the abandoned settlement of Pleasance. This settlement was founded in September of 1883, but was abandoned just a month later after a brutal massacre claimed 10 lives. This town has so much mystery to the victims of the massacre's graves being spread around the settlement, to the sign saying stay out plague and the drawing Arthur does in his journal with the skull in it. This settlement has a mysterious story to it that the player has to use the surrounding environment to learn more about. From this one location, we see the amount of death that went into designing these seemingly random locations and how each has their own stories that makes players even more intrigued about the Red Dead universe. That right there is an example of silent storytelling. But what about the silent storytelling within the main story? Oh, believe me, there's tons of it. A simple gesture or glance can convey an entire backstory, making the characters feel more real and relatable. This attention to detail is what makes the game's silent storytelling so effective, as it allows players to connect with the characters on a deeper level. I believe one of the best examples of this is one of the very last scenes of the main story where Arthur reveals the truth behind Micah. Have a look at the scene. You is with me, and who is betraying me? Well, I'm here. Think, think for yourself. He's lying. He's lying. Put your guns down. Okay, did you catch any of it? All right, so take a look at Javier. You can tell he hesitates to raise his gun against John and Arthur. That right there is so easy to miss because of everything that is going on, but tells you how Javier feels about John and Arthur. Now, from that one interaction, he didn't have to say a word, but you could tell he really did not want to raise a gun against John and Arthur. You can tell he still cared about them in a way, and he doesn't know how to feel about any of that. He really was confused and he stuck with Dutch because he was loyal to Dutch. And from that one small little detail right there, you could get so much about how Javier is feeling in that situation. And Bill does something similar. Although he isn't as noticeable with his hesitation, you could tell he was like looking around trying to find a reason not to aim his gun at them because he cared about them. This is perfect silent storytelling right here because what it does is it shows how these two characters are feeling in this scene without them saying a word this scene is so effective in the way it leverages the player's imagination to fill in the gaps by not spelling everything out the game trusts the player to piece together the narratives themselves making the experience feel more personal and impactful this is the true power of silent storytelling it creates a sense of ownership 
an investment that's hard to find in more traditional narrative-driven games. Now, of course, that's not the only example of it. Let's take a look at another scene that does silent storytelling really well, this one being the iconic death scene of our protagonist, Arthur Morgan. And as you watch this, I'm going to pause it and make notes, but take a look at Dutch's face and Arthur's, because they have the most silent storytelling throughout it. It is over now, Arthur. It's over. Oh, Dutch. He's right. You know it, and I know it. From that very first part of the scene, you can tell Dutch is fighting an inside battle with him really wanting to believe and trust Arthur, but really not knowing how to feel after he felt betrayed with Arthur's action in this chapter. Let's keep going. He's sick. He's dying. He's talking crazy. Okay, so I wanted to circle back because you can see it even more now because he's just being even more conflicted about this. And like just seeing Arthur dying right in front of him is really making him upset, but he also is feeling very betrayed. He, and he's showing this just from his face. I want to remind you of that, just from his face. I gave you all I had. I did. Uh. Uh. Come on, Dutch. Let's go, buddy. We made it. We won. Come on. John made it. He's the only one. The rest of us. No. So just look at Micah. Uh, he has the face of a liar. You can even look at him. He doesn't have to say a word and you can tell he's lying about being a rat. And he's just trying to hold on the false sense of security he had with Dutch. It's pathetic and it shows just from his facial expressions. I tried. In the end, I did. Come on. Let's go. We can make it. Come on, Dutch! This is actually a theme throughout the chapter of Dutch just walking away. Like when Sean died, he didn't even want to think about it. And now that he sees Arthur dying right in front of him, he's just walking away from his problem. If you like weren't really paying attention, you wouldn't really pick this up. But if you're but since you know this, you know this about Dutch, and you know that he just walks away from his problems, and that's what he's doing right here. Come on! So I wanted to end this off to talk about Arthur in this scene, how just from the looks of the picture, you can see him staring at the sunset, finally feeling at peace after saving John and finally living up to the man he really wanted to be. All of this is collected from this one image right here, at least in my opinion. So in that one cutscene alone, the three characters didn't have to say much to each other, but from their facial reactions alone, it told the story of how they are feeling. Their interpretations for all of this may be different than mine, which is the beauty of silent storytelling, since we can all interpret it differently, but the same story will still be told. So let me know your interpretations in the comments. And when you play Red Dead Redemption 2 next time, look at the characters. Don't listen to their words. Look at their faces. 
read the notes, learn about all the locations, and get truly immersed in the silent storytelling of Red Dead Redemption 2. Thank you for watching. Make sure if you enjoyed that to leave a like and subscribe. It helps me out a lot. And I cannot wait to see you all for the next video. Have a great night.